to Kelly Barlow Creations Crafting on a Budget. Today's video is so budget friendly, you're gonna love this. Next weekend, Jeff and I have a wedding that we're going to for a guy at his fire station who's getting married. And as I've told you in previous videos, I like to gift a DIY gift that I've made. It's something I've always liked to do. Even if I buy part of a gift, I always try to incorporate something DIY that I've made into the gift. Weddings are no exception. They're actually one of my favorite occasions to actually make DIY gifts for. And so the next two videos that I'm gonna be making, I think you're absolutely gonna love because I'm actually making two projects for this wedding. And so I can't wait to show these to you, these gift ideas. I think you're gonna love them. I love them and I tell you, each of them, the cost is under $10 and the outcome of them is really, really nice. And I think that anybody who receives these would absolutely love them. So let's get started. I'm gonna show you how to do these. I'm not gonna show you everything you need for this project beforehand. So go ahead and grab yourself a pen and paper and make yourself a list as I'm putting this together because over the next couple days, I'm actually gonna be doing these videos and putting them together because there is drying time and cutting time involved. And so it's not something that I can do all in one day for these two projects. First thing you need is, I had Jeff go over to Lowe's today and he picked me up this one by six by eight foot tall pine wood panel. If you wanna do this project smaller and make your dimensions different, you are more than welcome to, but that's, this is just the size that Jeff and I wanted to do for this project, so we needed an eight foot piece of this wood pine panel. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are actually gonna cut this panel into two and a half foot increments. I need uh, three pieces at two and a half feet long, and the width is gonna stay the same, we just need the length to be two and a half feet long, which is 30 inches, and we need three of those. You also need finishing wood, and I believe that's what this is called. I'm guessing I'm not um, a carpenter, although I pretend I am half the time. And this piece I got at Lowe's for a previous project that I made a video for, it was an eight foot piece for 87 cents, and it is pine. You need to cut two pieces at 18 inches. Alrighty, so we've got our one by six pine wood panels cut. Again, they were two and a half feet long each, which is 30 inches long. And I've got my wood finishing pieces cut as well. And I will tell you now that I misspoke and said 18 inches is what you need to cut these. And you need to cut them at 15. I don't know why I said 18, I apologize for that, but you need to cut them at 15 inches. Now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take our two finishing pieces we're gonna set them apart and we are going to put just a bit of glue down the middle. We don't want too much glue on these. Uh, we don't want them oozing out everywhere. Then you're gonna take one of your wood panels and you are going to place it in the middle. And you want to put, you wanna have maybe an inch from the bottom. You want them up about an inch from the bottom and the top. You don't want to do it flush with the edges. Then we're going to take our second panel and we are going to place it right alongside it. And the same with your third panel ahead and place that right alongside of it as well. Then what we're going to do is we are going to take our wood screws and I've got, um, I think they're one and a quarter inch wood screws. I've got six of them and I am going to screw them two in each panel, one on top, one on the bottom, into the finishing wood on the back. And I'm gonna do it right in the middle of the panel. And when you're screwing into pine, you need to be very careful that you don't split the wood.
Alrighty, so we've got our panels screwed on and glued. Now what's left is to stain this. And I'm first going to sand it a bit because there are some markings on this. And the stain I have chosen is the Minwax and I am doing the Weathered Oak. And so this is my finish. You choose what finish you like, but I'm going to go ahead and stain this and I need to let it set for a couple days and really let it dry. Okay, so I initially showed you the Weathered Oak Minwax can that I was going to stain this with. I started the, I did one coat of the Weathered Oak by Minwax and it looked very gray. It looked very different than the color splotch that you see online or in Lowe's and I am so sorry for the back noise. It is a really nice afternoon and Friday and everybody's out doing their thing. So I'm sorry, but anyhow, so I went ahead and I had some uh, walnut Minwax and I went ahead and mixed the walnut with the weathered oak and just put just a few drops of the walnut in to darken it up. And I did that to the front and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So I'll just show you on the back. Um, you know, I use, when I stain, I use this sponge. Typically it's not in a cup, but you know, I did my concoction. And so this is the color that I came up with. And I'm happy with this because I am using dark lettering and I don't want the wood to be so dark that you don't see the lettering. I need the lettering to stand out on this. Alrighty, so our one by sixes that we screwed together and stained are all dry. And I love the color that this came out. This, it, I couldn't have gotten a more better color that I wanted. And so now what's left is to embellish this. So what did I do this morning? This morning I cut out a few things on my Cricut. And so I've cut out an R, um, a 12 by 12 R that I'm going to be putting on here. And I've also cut out a real nice, um, kind of like what gave me like a, a wrought iron decorative look embellishment here. And I think that this was on elegant um, lines, not elegant edges. This is going to go right below the R. And I also went ahead and cut out um, a cute little established um, letters for established in 2016. Okay, and the six in this is supposed to be quite a bit bigger. It's the font that I chose. This is what it is going to look like. So I put it, I like to lay it out so I know. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to grab my Krylon spray, permanent spray adhesive. And I am not going to Mod Podge this. Some people would Mod Podge this and feel free to do so. But because this is for a wedding, I really, really, really want this to be set as perfectly on here as it can be. And I don't want any gloss to it. I don't want any brush strokes on the top of it. And even if you just put the Mod Podge in the back, and don't get me wrong, I love Mod Podge, but Sometimes when it, you set it down, it starts bubbling in spots and then it wrinkles and it doesn't set perfectly flat. And I don't want these lines on these letters or these decorative embellishments that I've cut out altered in any way. And so with that being said, that is why I choose the Krylon spray adhesive. It's much neater, it's cleaner, it's easier. And once I put it on, it is on and I don't have to put anything um, on top of it to seal it. I'm not even gonna seal this because I like the matted look of the black from my craft paper. And so that's pretty much what we're gonna do now. And so I'm gonna get to doing that. Alrighty, and there we have it. Isn't that just the coolest gosh darn it thing ever? And look how easy it is. You know, their initial with a cool little embellishment and the established year was 2016. I think that this is just so rustic and so cool and so simple. And let me tell you everybody, the wood for this cost us $6 and I think 87 cents for one 
one by six that was eight feet long. And I did have an 87 cent eight foot long finishing strip that I had used for another video that's upcoming. And so I had leftover and I used it. So if you had to buy all the wood for this, literally would cost you like $7.20, no joke. And if you have a Cricut, you probably have cardstock. And so you just have a wedding gift right here for $7.20. And it is an awesome wedding gift. And I just think that they're gonna love it. And I can, and I know that they're gonna like this because of their wedding invitation. It had um, their initials in wood, like a burnt up wood as the picture in the background of their invitation. And so I know that they're gonna love this gift. And I have the other project that I did in a previous video or an upcoming video, because I'm not sure which way I'm going to um, upload them, which one will be first. But you know what? Literally both projects together, a combined total of right under $10 for both gifts, totally. It wasn't 20, it was 10 for the wood that I needed for both of these projects. And I just love it. I mean, I, I think that anybody would love these. You can't beat that. Why would you spend 50 or $60 when you can make something like this for somebody? And they're gonna absolutely love it. They can hang it, you know, they can set it somewhere. I don't know, I just love it. And I think they're gonna well, love it. Well, that's all I have for you today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I encourage you to go and make this project for a special occasion that you'll be attending, whether it's a baby shower, an engagement, party, a bridal shower, a wedding, I think you should do this. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram and what else, Pinterest, holy cow, that's a lot, and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, holy moly. I guess I am asking a lot of you today, aren't I? Anyway, everybody, I hope you have a great day and stay tuned for more Kelly Barlow Crafting on a Budget videos to come. And until next time, everybody, happy crafting on a budget and bye for now.